Hey guys, it's Cody from ITVision.com and today we have a very exciting quick tip for you, how to make coding accessible. That's right, we're not just doing something with the concept of coding, we are not making manipulatives to kind of uh, show different concepts within coding. We are actually going to teach you how to take a high school computer science programming curriculum and fully adapt it so that a student that uses NVDA or Braille support um, or JAWS can use. Now, a lot of times what you will find if your student is enrolled in a computer science class nowadays in a public school, they'll be using something like Code HS. And that's what I have up here. Another one that's really common and I'll show you is code.org. And what are these? These are websites that um, a student actually logs into their account and they go to a course and they learn to code. All right. So it teaches them step by step. So I'm going to go into one of these courses, it teaches them step by step how to write a program. Okay. So for example, I'm going to click down. It's going to say example, hello world, right? It gives them some instructions. And then there's actual code here that they can run. So if I run that code, there's a little output here. And that's it, all right? They write their program in this window. They run output. Now let's take a look at what a little bit more of a complex program looks like if we come all the way down here. And let's take a look at one of these guys. We're gonna take a look at an example of a list, okay? Um, they're gonna give some uh, instructions. I say explore this example and here's our program, right? This is our program and I run, I run it, there's our output, okay? Now here's the beautiful thing about this. If you're like, oh my gosh, I don't understand this at all, it's okay, guess what? I don't either. I am not a programmer, I'm not a computer science expert, but I do know how to download software and I do know how to copy and paste, which are really the only two things you need to do to make all of this accessible with a screen reader. Now, let's show the problem. I'm gonna stay on this program right now. I'm gonna show you the problem. If our student is a screen reader user, if they use JAWS or NVDA and they are logging into CodeHS, I'm gonna turn on NVDA right now and show you kind of what this looks like, why this is a problem, why this is something that we need to adapt, okay? Now that NVDA is on, I'm just gonna tab through this website because that's what this is. It's a website or a web app, okay? I'm gonna tab through and just show you kind of the problem. Now, the one thing that I wanna be able to read here is this, right? This is our program. If I can't read this, then it's not accessible, okay? Um, right now, I'm actually clicked in this text field. Let's see if I can go up and down and see if it reads nothing. Look, at I'm scrolling all the way up and all the way down. Doesn't read at all. Let's see if I can press tab. Well, I'm tabbing through, right? Let's give a little help out with a my list mouse is here. like a mutable. Okay, I'm gonna click up. I just clicked up at the top of my website, which of course a screen reader user can't do. Um, but let's see if I can get around this website. Navigation landmark list with four items sandbox. Okay. My courses save. Okay, so as you can see, I am moving around the outskirts of this website, but nothing is really labeled as it should be, right? This is just button. This is just button, right? We don't know what those buttons are. And the most important thing was really at the edit beginning. Multi -line. If I click in this edit box, nothing happens it's not accessible right um so how do we make this accessible well when at first glance you're going to be like well this isn't accessible we can't use this at all guess what that's not necessarily true and, it's, and it only takes a couple of steps to make this this whole crazy inaccessible mess completely accessible to a student with a visual impairment and i'm going to show you that today in just a 15 minute video Okay, so we're going to start off with just talking about the pieces of software that you have to download. Now, you do have to download two pieces of software. In some cases, you have to download one, but in, in most cases, you have to download two. The first thing that you have to download is the code editor. Now, what we are actually going to do is we are going to be making something like this into something like this. All right. Now, what is this? What, what program did I just open? This is a code editor. This is something that if you are a computer science um, major, 
in college or you were a software engineer for a company, you would be opening a program like this. This is not at all connected to the internet. This is housed on my computer. And this code is actual Python code that I've pulled from CodeHS. So we have to download this program, the code editor, okay? Now, the second thing that we have to download is the language that your student is coding in, right? So let's take a look back at my CodeHS um, course, okay? Right now, I'm in a CodeHS course. Now, there's lots of different courses, right? There's courses on, and all of them are connected to a um, computer programming language, right? Now, if you don't know a lot about computer programming languages, that's, that's fine. All you need to know is the name of the one that your student is learning. Um, in this case, I'm going to be showing you how to use the Python um, course, okay? So right now, I'm in my Intro to Computer Science in Python, right? So what you need to do is figure out what, um, if your student is using CodeHS or Code.org, figure out what course, okay, um, your student is going to be learning from. And in many cases, that language will be right in the course title. Intro to computer science in Python or in JavaScript or in HTML, whatever it is, okay? Um, or in C++, okay? So not only do you have to download Visual Studio Code or the, the code editor, right? But you also have to download the programming language. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to download Python, okay? So let's get started, all right? Let's assume, and this is code.org, let's assume that I don't have Visual Studio Code installed. All I'm going to do is on the internet, open a new tab, and I'm going to say the code editor that we're going to be using today, and this is the reason why, is that it is the um, most accessible one that I've found. It's called VS Code, V-S-C-O-D-E, and then I'm going to say download. All right, download Visual Studio Code. That's what we want. All of these links will be in the description. And then download Visual Studio Code. We're going to do it for Windows. I'm going to download that, okay? And my download's going to start over here. Now, it's really important to um, study, keep this web page open. Don't close it yet, and you're going to see why, okay? Once my Visual Studio Code opens, I'm going to double-click it to download. It's saying that I already have it, but you would go through the download wizard, okay? And then we're going to move on, all right? We're going to download... Python, okay, or whatever programming language that your student is using, okay? For us, we're going to say Python download, right? And there it is, download Python, python.org, right? That looks pretty official. And take a look at this. A lot of times, these languages will have an icon because they are made by a company, all right? Take a look at my code at .org or I'm sorry, my code HS course, look at that icon. Look at that icon. It's the exact same, right? So I'm going to come down here. All you're going to do is find the most, the latest version of Python. You're going to click that download, and it's also going to download down here in the bottom. Python is already installed on my machine, so I'm not going to do that. But all you do is click on download. Okay. Now, there's a reason why I said keep this, this page up. This is the page that opened after I downloaded Visual Studio Code. And the reason is, is I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom here. And there's one more thing that you have to do. The thing is that you have to download the extension of the language that you your student is using. So although we already downloaded Python here, all we have to do is click on the Python extension and say install, okay? And when you do that, it'll open, it'll say you're already installed or it, it will install for you, and then you're done. All of your software that you need to adapt your material is done. You have the code editor, you have the uh, programming language, and you have that extension. Done, right? So now we move on to how do we actually, I'm going to close all my tabs, right? We've already done all that. How do we actually take this curriculum and adapt it so that my student, so that my student can not only read code like this, but also so that they can find it in a really organized way. Let's start by adapting each one of these. Now, let's start with our video. In CodeHS, the first lesson of every module is a video. Now, the easiest way that I found is to download Welcome that back. video. In this video, you'll learn how to make the most... Whoop. 
and I'm going to pause that to download this video so that we can just import it into Google Drive and the student has access to it. OK, and it's really easy to do. All I'm going to do is it's a little wonky. You might have to go into it a couple of times for you to get the download link. Um, but, you know, we, we're used to workarounds in this field, right? There it is. All right. Click these three uh, dots and then we're going to click on download. OK, beautiful. And as you could see, I kind of had to go into it a couple of times for that to actually happen. But it is now downloaded down here. OK, I'm going to keep that down there. It's going to be in my downloads folder for me to grab later. OK, now down here at the bottom, we don't have to back all the way out. We can just kind of move along. 3.1.2, actually, in this course in particular, each one of these is a quiz. Now, this quiz is actually totally accessible with NVDA. So what I have my student do is come in and actually do this quiz with NVDA, okay? Now, moving on. So I don't, I don't even adapt 3.1.2, okay, because it's accessible. Um, and it would also be a lot harder to, ac uh, to adapt than it would be for my student to access. So... Um, that's kind of how I make that decision. Now we get into the real meat, all right? This is actually where we have to start doing some copying and pasting into our code editor, okay? And this is the example problems. Now, there's two parts of these problems. The first one is the instructions, and the second part is the code, right? Two parts. So, and we have to make sure that they have access to both, right? So I'm going to do that again. I'm going to get my instructions up. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to open Visual Studio Code. I'm going to just to prove a point here. I'm going to find it on the desktop. I'm going to open a new session. Okay. I'm going to do file, new file. Okay. And then all I'm going to do is copy everything, right? The instructions. We're going to copy. Ooh, missed that E there. Copy, Control C. I'm going to go back to Visual Studio Code. And all we're going to do is paste it in here, Control V. I'm going to make a new line, and I'm going to skip one actually. I'm going to say Explore this example. And then we're also going to copy this code, Control C, Control V. Okay. Now, this is not yet a code file. And the reason why I can tell is when I save this, right? When I save this, all right, it says untitled one, and then you see it says plain text. Now, what we need to do is we need to tell the computer that this is not a plain text file. This is not just text. This is a programming file. And in particular, it's the file type is the language that your student is programming in. So remember, our, we're working with Python right now, right? So what I'm going to do is this is uh, module number 3.1.3. That is not what I typed. This is module number 3.1.3. .3, and I'm going to label this as a Python file. Now, look at all these programming languages. Isn't this cool, right? You can choose which programming language your student is using, right? So if they're using PHP or CSS or HTML, whatever, uh, you choose the file type, okay? Now, if you don't choose the right file type, it is a little bit of a problem, okay? So please make sure that you are choosing the right file type for your learner. I'm going to show you two different ways to do this. First, we can use this drop-down menu and choose Python. Or you can type 3.1.3.py, all right? Each file type has a different extension, okay? So a Python file is always a .py file, just like a Microsoft Word file is a .docs file, right? So let's find a folder that we're going to do this. I like to do this in chunks. So I'm going to put in my documents. I'm going to make a new folder. That's control shift N or I can right click and do new folder, right? Um, make that new folder and we call this 3.1, okay? And in 3.1, we're gonna put 3.1.3.py. 3 we're gonna make that Python file. Now look what happens. What? Look at all of this changes color and that's how you can tell that you did the right language if it changes color really funky like for example you see these directions this is not python code you see how that's really funky um that means that you chose the wrong file if your whole file is like this that means you chose the wrong file 
Now, the instructions, we don't want to keep that way, okay? And the reason is because they're not code, right? They're instructions. So the really easy way to do this in Python, and this is different for every programming language, but in Python, we're going to make this a comment by putting a hashtag or a number sign, whatever you like to say at the beginning. And you see how that turns it all green? That's telling our learner, um, hey, guess what? That's not code. That's just instructions, okay? So that's a comment. And that's it. So let's just show do a little test here, okay? In computer science principles, a visual student would click on 3.1.3. They'd read these instructions. Example, hello world. This is an example of a Python, Python program that displays the text hello world to the screen. Oh, man. And then we're going to exit, um, explore the example. They're going to see this code. They're going to be able to run it. Okay. Pretty cool access, right? Got all of that, all right? Then what does our, our uh, student with a screen reader do? Well, they open this file, 3.1.3. They turn on their screen reader. Uh, hopefully it's already on. Um, and what do they hear? Num number example, hello world. Number this is an example Python program that displays the text hello Look at that. blank, print hello world. Now, the big thing about coding is that they are going to have to read letter by letter or attach a braille display so they can get this actual spacing and the quotation marks and all of the punctuation correct. Thanks for joining us for this week's quick tip. For more information, visit us online at itvision.com and make sure to check back every week for more videos to help you support your students as they actively participate and contribute to their communities. I'm Cody LaPlante and on behalf of everyone at IT, Thanks for watching.